as they have said in your ears in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the impossible become possible in the name of Jesus Christ. And today also is our anointing service, Lord. By the anointing, let every work be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. I step aside, sweet Holy Spirit, have your way. Do what you alone can do. Glorify yourself in our midst again. And at the end, we vow to return all glory to you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let the people of God shout a bigger, bigger amen. Please put your hands together for Jesus. And you can comfortably take your seat. Please help me extend your hand of love to your neighbor, to your left, to your right, and say to them, you are welcome into God's presence. I'm excited to see you in church this morning. The Lord bless you richly in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have done that, please put your hands together for Jesus once again. Praise the Lord, I am more than a conqueror. Congratulations. Amen and amen. We want to thank God to appreciate Him for His doings in our life as individual, as a family, as a church, even as a commission as well. This God has been so good to us. I thought someone is clapping for Jesus. We saw it earlier on the uh, uh, short video clip that was shared with us about Covenant University and also Landmark University. God is doing amazing things there. And I pray that every project you embark on as well shall be a success in the name of Jesus Christ. Concerning you, you shall be celebrated too in the name of Jesus Christ. For those testimonies read, I mean, the one read to us and also life testimonies, our sister testified of, I mean, a God goodness for gift of life. We pray that God Almighty will continue to keep you. You fulfill the number of your days in the name of Jesus Christ. And also for the family that came out for, to appreciate God for family reunion. According to their testimony, they said for 10 years they have been trusting God for a day like this. And what a wonderful God. God made it happen for them. Let's put our heads together for Jesus. Let's appreciate Jesus for those testimonies. I will pray that God will continue to keep the family together in the name of Jesus Christ. The unity in the family will not go down in the name of Jesus Christ. The same as you are saying amen for others, I pray that your own testimony, you will return with them from this service in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall return with your testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, today is our new born banquet service. Let's be full of expectation. Our God specializes in doing new things. He likes doing new things. For me personally, I like new things. I don't know about you. Huh? Well, only few people are responding. Ah. <laughs> we are in the presence of God. Don't be afraid. Be confident. Don't pity God. Don't pity Him. I like new things. Some believers, they, they pity God. God is, He has the capacity. He can make the impossible possible. The earth was without any form in Genesis. And it called forth everything into being. He called forth things and they came to it. Up to everything. Everything came to be. So stop putting God. Don't limit God. Don't put God in a box. He's bigger than it. He's not a careless talker. He talks according to his capacity. Say, I will do a new thing for you. Amen. Joseph was a man that was in prison. Overnight, God stepped in and turned his situation around. During the midweek, I tried to expatiate it that he had criminal record. In this land, if you have criminal record, will you be employed? He had a criminal record. He was in prison. He was illegal. His case was so, it was upside down, written off completely. But God stepped in, a prisoner becoming a prime minister. Without campaign, without experience, he made it happen. So that same God will visit you today in the name of Jesus Christ. And it also God this as our anointing all service. So be full of expectation. And I see God Almighty visiting you in the name of Jesus Christ. Straight into the word of God. Our prophetic focus for the month is wisdom from above and thrones. Can we echo it together as a church? And I pray that wisdom from above will entrain you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I would like to share with us two scriptures that one of my mentors shared with me during the week. Proverbs 23, 26. Proverbs 23, 26. Please follow me carefully. Follow me carefully. My son, give me thy heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. My son, give me thy heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. God is saying to us, especially winner's family, that give me your hearts. Give me your hearts. Why? Because your heart is the center of your life. Only those that give God their heart will make mark in life. Only those that give God their heart will make mark in life. Many believers, they are only following God with their eyes, but not with their hearts. They are only following God with their eyes, but not with their hearts. But let's take it further now. Can we turn now to the book of Psalms 90 verse 12? Psalms 90 and verse 12. Psalms 90 and verse 12. Psalms 90 and verse 12. So teach us to number our days. I will pause here. I would like you to write your age, please, somewhere. Just write it somewhere. How old are you? Just write it somewhere. I'm not asking you to tell me. Just write it somewhere. Look at it. Follow me carefully. It says that we may apply our hearts. Apply our hearts unto what? Unto wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing. Wisdom is a principal thing. You and I would need wisdom to make mark in life. Go back, please, to that uh, Proverbs, please. Proverbs 2, 3, 26. Look at it now. My son, give me thy heart, and let your eyes observe my ways. God's ways, they are wisdom ways. God's ways, they are wisdom ways. You cannot follow God's ways and miss your way in life. You cannot follow God's ways and miss your way in life. The book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. God's thoughts are not your thoughts. You cannot compare your thoughts with God's thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Following God's ways, they are high ways. A man that give his heart to God and observe God's ways, which are high ways, we end up a high flyer in life. We end up a high flyer in life. Where you are now is tired of you. Yesterday's wisdom cannot handle today's challenge. That's why you need new wisdom on a daily basis. You need fresh wisdom on a daily basis. It covers all areas of life. It covers all wisdom, covers all areas of life. The book of Exodus chapter 31 verse 3. Exodus 31 verse 3. Exodus 31 and verse 3. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God. As we are anointed today, I see the Spirit of God filling you up. Amen. In wisdom. I just want to say amen to that. In understanding Amen. and in knowledge Amen. and in all manner of workmanship. Amen. As you are noted today, the Spirit of God will bend on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will become a high flyer in life in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere you are found, you will become a high flyer there in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1 verse 20, Daniel 1 20, talking about the three Hebrew boys. The Bible said, and in all matter of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, I found them ten times better, 
ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. Lift up your hands to God this morning. I pray that God will baptize you with wisdom that will make you ten times better in the name of Jesus Christ. Ten times better in your career in the name of Jesus Christ. As a student, you will be ten times better in the name of Jesus Christ. As a businessman, businesswoman, you will be ten times better in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know what ten times better is? When others are performing their capacities 100%. It means that your own capacity will be 1,000. That's 10 times 10,000 percent. That, that's what 10, 10 times is. When others are performing, say, 10 percent, you will be hitting 100 percent. To be far above. Quickly, let's go further. We serve a God of all wisdom who gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the men of understanding. This morning, I see God giving you wisdom that will single you out anywhere you go in the name of Jesus Christ. The depth both of the wisdom and knowledge of God are unsearchable. They are unsearchable. Romans 11.33 Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. God's ways are high ways. His wisdom, they are unsearchable. It surpasses the understanding of man. I see that wisdom coming on you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I see that wisdom coming on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, let's take it further. What is wisdom? What is divine wisdom? What is divine wisdom? Divine wisdom is the wisdom that the Holy Ghost teaches principally as rhema or as direct instructions. Divine wisdom, I take it again, divine wisdom is the wisdom that the Holy Ghost teaches principally as rhema or as direct instruction. Hear me and hear me, people of God, that the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. In the natural world, they say, they say that experience is the best teacher, but I say no. Experience can disappoint you. Because things are changing, things are evolving. But the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. The book of John chapter 14 and verse 26. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, that's Jesus Christ speaking there, he shall teach you all things. Say with me, all things. As a believer, we must not limit the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, they are the same thing. Don't limit the Holy Ghost. When it comes to subject as a student in school, the Holy Spirit knows it. No matter how complicated the course may look like, the Holy Spirit knows it. If it comes to business, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost knows it. He's more experienced there. He's knowledgeable there. The Holy Spirit is for our advantage, not for our disadvantage. Tap into the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's your helper. He's your teacher. That's what the Bible there says it there clearly, that he will teach you all things, not some things. All things. These are potential spiritual things the Holy Spirit will teach you. Spiritual things, natural things, the Holy Spirit knows it. How do I know that? If you go back to Genesis chapter 1, at the beginning, the Holy Spirit was there. See, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and verse 2 now, and the earth was without form and void. The darkness was upon the face of the dead, and the Spirit of God, look at it there, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of 
of the waters. The Holy Spirit is experienced. No one is older than the Holy Spirit. Is anyone older than the Holy Spirit here? He's more experienced than every one of us here. I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to open you up in the name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will continue to teach you what to do part time in the name of Jesus Christ. You will never miss your way in life in the name of Jesus Christ. When you come to any junction in life, what you need to do is to cry out to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your teacher, he's your best friend. When it comes to wisdom, the Holy Spirit is there. That's the definition of divine wisdom. It is the wisdom that the Holy Ghost teaches principally as rhema or as divine instruction. Anytime he gives you instruction, jump at it. Everything we are doing in this commission is by the help of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that is teaching us. That's why we don't do anything outside this book. We do it according to as it is written. As the Holy Spirit gives the signal, that's how we do it. 1999, or 1998 rather, God told the servant that come 1999 September, that faith tabernacle shall be dedicated. Looking at the structure itself, no one, no any contractor can take that project. God said clearly to his servant that look, call on to my sons that are outside in the field. Bring them in to handle this project. Because the structure standing in the midst of it that can seat 50,000 people, there is no pillar in the middle of it. There is no way that such construction has ever been carried out. But by the help of the Holy Ghost, by the instruction of the Holy Spirit, he called on to the pastors that are outside there in the field, outside Nigeria. And they came into I mean, uh, Canaan land and they embarked on this project. And within one year, God completed it. That's the wisdom of God. That's the wisdom of God. No matter how big that future may look like that God has shown you, don't be afraid. What you need to do is to call on the Holy Spirit to show you how to get there. Don't be afraid. I pray that you arrive at your glorious destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. You arrive there gloriously in the name of Jesus Christ. You arrive there gloriously in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, let's go through this point. How powerful is wisdom from above? How powerful is wisdom from above? And we'll be anchoring it on Job 28, reading from verse 7. Job 28, from verse 7. There is a part which no fowl will know it, and which the vultures I have not said. And verse 8 now, please. The lion's whips have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He put forth his hand upon the rock and overturned mountains by the roots. Number one is that this wisdom from above it creates solutions. Say with me, it creates solutions. From verse 9, where we just read now, the Bible says, He turned forth his hand upon the rock and overturned the mountains by the roots. And verse 10, He cut out rivers among the rocks, and his eyes seeth every precious thing. His eyes seeth every precious thing. A man of wisdom will always see things that others don't see. Where others are looking and they cannot see the solution, a man of wisdom, wisdom from above, will have access to things that other people don't see. That's why I'm not concerning you that this month God will open your eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. 
this means that we are talking about enables you to create solution. It empowers you to pro create solution. To create impossible solution. And as a result of that, of that, you become a man and a woman to be sought after. Because there are problems everywhere. There are challenges everywhere. But because you are a man of solution, you do a man to be sought after. And you all agree with me that people of solution, they are very scarce. That's why you need this wisdom. That's why you need this wisdom. You may not have anything now. Praise God for you. But go for wisdom. Why? Because when you are equipped with wisdom, you have everything very soon. Please, can you turn off your phone, please? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why at the beginning of this ministry, God's servants, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, invested 28 months praying, praying, praying. And what was he praying for? For wisdom. Divine wisdom. Divine wisdom. See the way God is expanding this commission. It's a case study. On every side. Taking over everywhere they go. I pray that that shall be your own testimony too in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. How powerful is wisdom from above? Number two. It provides supernatural discoveries. It provides supernatural discoveries. We are still writing on that book of Job 28. Let's read verse 10 and 11 now. He cutted out rivers among the rocks, and his eyes seared every precious day. He binded the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hidden bringeth he forth to light. That is, things that are hidden, wisdom brings them out. Things that are hidden, wisdom brings them out. For instance, now, the smartphone you have, five, seven years ago, do you have smartphones? And back those days, anytime you want to especially bank your check, you have to go into, into the check, into the bank, I mean, isn't it? You have to queue, isn't it? But now, with smartphone, all those things, they are what? That even if you don't need to go into the bank anymore. You can, you know, you can bank your check. Just take a photo of it. Everything will just upload. That's the power of someone's wisdom. Someone's wisdom. What other people cannot see, you are, you have that capacity to see it. I pray that divine wisdom will empower you. To begin to make new discoveries in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Proverbs 8:12. Proverbs 8:12. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. That's wisdom they are talking. There are better ways to do things. What we are doing right now, there are better ways to do them. We can improve on them, but we need wisdom. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. Lift up your hands to God. The same God that gave Daniel and Joseph wisdom. I see God baptizing you with wisdom this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Number three, we are talking about how powerful is this wisdom from above. Number three, it is out of this world order of wisdom. It is out of this world order of wisdom. We said we have four kinds of wisdom, isn't it? James chapter 3, reading from verse 15 downwards to 17 to 18. We have earthly wisdom, we have sensual wisdom, we have devilish wisdom, and we have wisdom from above, which is from God. That's what we are focusing on. All that wisdom, they are low. They are lower than the wisdom from God Almighty. The wisdom from God is out of this world. It is out of this world. Talking about Solomon. Solomon was a king that God blessed with wisdom. And in the Bible, it was not recorded that Solomon ever traveled out of his palace. Other kings from far and near, they were coming to learn from him. 
Well, because his own wisdom was out of this world. Out of this world. I pray that you shall be a reference point, a positive reference point in the name of Jesus Christ. When other people are confused, they don't know what to do, they will run up to you as a result of the wisdom of God at work in your life. Concerning your family, concerning your business, concerning your finances, in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall be a positive reference point in the name of Jesus Christ. If that is you I'm talking about, let your amen show it. Let's jump to verse 12 and 13 now. That's the same book of Job 28, 12 and 13. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knows not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. This wisdom we are talking about from above, it passes the understanding of man. No one knows where it is. But for you and I as a child of God, you know where the wisdom we are talking about is from. It's from God Almighty. And I see God Almighty decorating you with wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four. This wisdom is not available in the knowledge market. You cannot acquire it in the school. You cannot acquire it in the knowledge market. It is with God. That's why at the beginning of the message I said God is asking us to give him our hearts. Give God your heart. Hear this. Until you give God your heart, you cannot give God your life. But if you give God your life, God cannot mismanage your life. God will make your life even better. God wants to transform you to make you a man to be sought after. That's why you must give it all it takes and ask for wisdom. Your prayer point for this month should be, Lord, I need wisdom, Lord. I need wisdom, Lord. I need wisdom, Lord. And I see God Almighty blessing you with wisdom. Not only wisdom, but mega, mega wisdom. Amen. That will make you to stand out anywhere you go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number five. How powerful is the wisdom from above? It stops the way against all evils. It stops the way against all evil. Proverbs 22 verse 3. Proverbs 22 verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are perished. So it means that wisdom will give you the signal. Will hint you when evil is at head. Wisdom will, not, will give you a hint not to go there. Especially when it comes to traveling or when it comes to investment. The Holy Spirit which is the, 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 the base of wisdom, we say, no, don't do that, son. Don't go there, daughter. That's why you need wisdom. You need wisdom. Number six, it enhances the value and relevance of believers. Number six, it enhances the value and relevance of believers. Job 28, verse 17. Job 28, verse 17. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewel or fine gold nothing can take the place of wisdom nothing can be compared with wisdom no matter how precious a stone is no matter how valuable things are this wisdom it makes you to be relevant anywhere you are found it distinguish you when a man of wisdom is speaking others they are quiet they are listening others are quiet and they are listening that's why you need this wisdom you must go out for it because it's a personal responsibility you cannot operate with my wisdom or can you operate with my wisdom you need your own wisdom you need to go for it as well I pray for you this morning that the wisdom that we enthrone you, I see God blessing you with it in the name of Jesus Christ. I see God blessing you with it in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere there's a problem, it means that wisdom is absent there. 
Anywhere there's a problem, it means that wisdom is not there, it's not a work there. What you need to go do is to go for wisdom. What light is to darkness, that's what wisdom is to, to solution. That's what wisdom is to challenges. That's what wisdom is to challenges, to trouble. But for you, every trouble, every problem, I see God Almighty giving you victory over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Number seven, how powerful is this wisdom from above? It commands dominion over destruction and death. It commands dominion over destruction and death. Job 28 verse 22. Job 28 and verse 22. Job 28 and verse 22. Destruction and death say we have had the fame thereof with our ears. It means that destruction and death they bow to wisdom. They have heard of it. They, they knew about wisdom. As the wisdom of God come upon you, you shall be indestructible in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Death will see you and run away in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom will preserve you and keep you, bless you with long life. Amen. And I pray that no one here will die long in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But how do we access divine wisdom? How do we access divine wisdom? Number one is through a heart for God. Through a heart for God. You must give your heart to God Almighty. Be interested in things that God are interested in. God is interested in souls. Be interested in it as well. Give your heart to God. And God will make you a reference point on earth. Give your heart to God. Give your heart to God. Daniel was, David rather, was a man that gave his heart to God. In 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 4. 1 Samuel 13 and verse 4. And all Israel had said that Saul has smitten a garrison of the Palestines and that Israel also had had the abomination with the Palestines. And the people were called together after Saul to give them. If you read that downwards, you will see there where it was said that God has found David. He's a man after God's own heart. That's why God empowered him, helped him, he became a mark in life. What you need to do is to give your hearts to God Almighty. Not one like in today, one like out tomorrow. Give your heart. If you can give your heart to God, it means you can give your life to God. And as you give your life to God, I see God Almighty making you a mark in life in the name of Jesus Christ. You will go far. You will make it in life, life in the name of Jesus Christ. You will succeed in life in the name of Jesus Christ. Access to divine wisdom. Number two is through joy and rejoicing. Through joy and rejoicing. Philippians 4.4. 4. Philippians 4.4. 4. A joyful heart can only have access to wisdom. A heart that is full of sorrow cannot have access to wisdom from God. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. No matter how your situation may look like, keep rejoicing in the Lord, because that's the instruction from God. Rejoice again, and I say, rejoice. Be joyful always. Be joyful always. That's what the devil is always trying to do. He wants to steal people's joy. That things are not going the way you wanted. Don't allow that to steal your joy. Be joyful. Why? Well, because God is on your side. And if God be for you, nothing can be against you. And not only that, if you try anything and you fail, it means that God is packaging something better for you behind the scene. Be joyful. Be joyful. I think I said it some time ago, that those that carry long face, they, that, that long face will make their journey longer. But those that are joyful, 
that are full of joy because the Bible says in his presence is full of joy. When you are joyful, it means that God is with you. And one with God is majority. To acquire or to have access to this wisdom we are talking about, you must maintain a joyful heart. You must maintain a joyful heart. God is the reason why you have not lost all. Even if you have lost one, God is the reason why you have not lost all. And I pray for someone that no devil will tamper with your joy in the name of Jesus Christ. No enemy will rob your joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the enemy's agenda is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But for you, you will be exempted. By the reason of today's encounter, you are exempted in the name of Jesus Christ. Maintain your joy always. Be joyful. Be joyful. Be joyful. Why? Because you have a glorious future ahead of you. You have a better future ahead of you. I would like you to lift up your hand and ask the Lord, Lord, baptize me with wisdom, Lord. I need more wisdom, Lord. Baptize me with your wisdom. Give me more wisdom, Lord. Give me more wisdom, Lord. Are you praying at all? Lift up your hand and ask the Lord, Lord, I need more wisdom, Lord. Wisdom to manage my life, Lord. Wisdom that will entrain me, Lord. Wisdom that will make me to stand out, Lord. Lord, grant me wisdom, Lord. I need wisdom, Lord. I need wisdom. No more foolishness, Lord. No more foolishness, Lord. Grant me access to more wisdom, Lord. I need wisdom, Lord. Baptize me with wisdom. I need wisdom, Lord. Baptize me with wisdom. The same way you gave Solomon wisdom, I need wisdom, Lord. I need mega, mega wisdom, Lord. I need bigger, bigger wisdom, Lord. Wisdom to train up my children, Lord. Wisdom, Almighty, to be the best, Lord. I need wisdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you and thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And I see you returning with supernatural wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. And also, I want to welcome you to your new dawn season. I thought someone was clapping for Jesus. Where we read earlier on, God wants to open a new chapter for you. Chapters. Chapters. New chapters. That's the definition of new dawn. God opening new chapters for us. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19, where we read earlier on that remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of the old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God is about to do something extraordinary for you. That's the nature of God. He loves doing new things. Things that eyes have not seen. Things that ears have not heard. That is what God will do for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear this. When one era stops, another new era begins. God is saying you have struggled enough. Enough of pain, enough of disappointment, enough of setback. God is said to put all those behind him and open a new chapter for you. He's about to turn your mourning into dancing. That is what new dawn is. And I pray that that's what God will do for someone this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I see God doing that for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So it means that God is closing the old and opening the new. <laughs> He's transforming darkness to light. Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. The book of Haggai chapter 2 and verse 9. Haggai 2 9. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace saith the Lord of hosts. When God do new things for you, there is peace there. There is peace. There is joy. There is peace. There is joy. I pray that no matter how difficult that challenge is, 
I see God stepping into it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I see God closing that chapter of disappointment, that chapter of failure, that chapter of setback. I see God putting an end to it in the name of Jesus Christ. The book of Psalms 30 verse 5, Psalms 30 and verse 5, Psalms 30 and verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Your own season of joy has just begun. Your own season of joy has just begun. So stop holding on to the past. The past is in the back. For instance, can I see what is behind me? No. Sometimes I wonder that why didn't God create our eyes to be at the back? Or why didn't God create our legs to go backward? He wants us to go forward always. That's why the Bible says the path of the jaws is like a shining light that shines more and more. Forget about the past. Stop holding on to it. Many are holding on to the past. That's why God has not opened a new chapter for them. Stop holding on to the past. Yes, it's not, I mean, unscriptural for you to feel, but for you to remain there is unscriptural. Rise up and move on. Rise up and go forward. I see God opening a new chapter for someone this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, what must I do to experience new dawn? Number one is that you must be born again. You must be born again. You must let go of sin and embrace righteousness. You must be born again. John 3.3 3. John 3.3 3. You must be born again. Number two, you must settle with the word of God. You must settle with the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Settle with the word of God. The Bible says we are changed from glory to glory. When you settle with the word of God, your life keeps changing. It will keep going from glory to glory. Not from shame to shame, but from glory to glory. And as you settle with the word of God, I see God opening a new chapter for you on a daily basis in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three is that you must be committed in serving God. Be committed in serving God. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah 1 19. Be committed in serving God. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall what? Eat the good of the land. Ye shall eat the good of the land. Be committed in serving him. And the instruction concerning serving God is in Exodus 23, 25. Exodus 23 and verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. So serve him. Don't be a bench woman in the church. Rather, engage. Be connected to any of the service unit as the Holy Spirit directs you. And lastly, number four, forsake not the gathering of the saints. Forsake not the gathering of the saints. If you want to keep experiencing new dawn, Psalms 84 verse 7, Psalms 84 and verse 7, Psalms 84 and verse 7. They go from strength to strength. That is, they go from new dawn to new dawn. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. Forsake not the gathering of the saints. I pray that God will open a new chapter for someone today in the name of Jesus Christ. Today shall be your own day in the name of Jesus Christ. No more setback for you in the name of Jesus Christ. No more setback for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I would like you to rise up to your feet with me as you begin to appreciate God and give him praise, give him glory for his word that came your way this morning. Give him praise, give him glory, appreciate him for his sent word. Appreciate him and give him praise for wisdom we have received. Appreciate him. Give him praise, give him glory. Give him honor, give him adoration. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please, all eye close, all head bow. All eye close, all head bow. If you are in this service, you have not yet surrendered your life to Christ, I would like you to put your right hand on your chest and I will pray with you. Until you are a member of the family of Christ, you cannot experience new dawn. If you are in this service, you have not yet said yes to Jesus Christ. I would like you to do that right now by putting your right hand on your chest and I will pray with you. All you are here in this service, you want to rededicate your life. 
Christ is the way. He is the truth and the life. Christ is the wisdom of God. Until you receive Christ, you will still be operating with natural wisdom. Natural wisdom can fail you, but the wisdom of God cannot fail you. Put your right hand now on your chest and I'll pray with you. Jesus Christ speaking and saying, If you are ashamed of me before men, I will also be ashamed of you before my Father. If you are in this service, you want to surrender your life, please put your right hand on your chest and I will pray with you. I'm not here to condemn you, but I'm here to lead you to Christ. If you are putting your right hand on your chest, say, Oh Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. From today, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for receiving me. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, thank you for these precious ones. As they have confessed you today, I pray, Lord, that you grant them the grace. Grace, Lord, to remain firm in the faith. Grace to stay with you to the end. Let it be released upon them today. Thank you, Father, for you've done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let the people of God say a bigger amen. amen. Please, if you have said that prayers, I would like you to raise up your hand and I would like to meet with you immediately after this service, please. See me after this service, please, if you do that. Shout a bigger, bigger hallelujah. During the week, we received an instruction that we should write our prayer our request, things we want God to do for us. I believe we've done that. Please, let's bring it out. Can I ask that the ushers, please, go around and quickly collect the prayer point, please, written as instructed. Please, ushers, hospitality, please join them quickly, please. Let's collect them quickly. Let's collect them quickly, please. As we are getting that ready, go, 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 boost. I thought someone is excited to hear this good news. Good, 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 good news. Okay, please take your seat. Take your seat then. Let's take our seat. Good, 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 good news. I thought someone is excited to hear good news. This week, God blessed us with our property finally. We got the keys with us. The property was paid for cash, not mortgaged, but cash. <laughs> in, in millions, in millions, God did it for us with this. And I pray that the same God that did it for Winners Chapel, Nottingham, will do it for every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't have a property yet in the UK, we use that property as a point of contact that God will bless you with your property this year in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you have your property already, God will wait more, give you more properties more in the name of Jesus Christ. So I would like us to in our city position, let's just lift up our hands and appreciate this God. Let's appreciate God of liberation for this wonderful thing he has done for us, for blessing us with this amazing property. Let's go ahead and give him praise. Let's give him glory, let's give him honor, let's give him adoration. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And very soon we'll be moving there. We're on the countdown. <laughs> shout, 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 hallelujah. Please.